Good morning. This is Polly and I'm Dave McCoy and we're in front of our home at Beacon Hill at Eastgate. We indeed feel fortunate to be able to join our church family on this Sunday of Pentecost. This is our part of a litany for Pentecost. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the voice of the deep. But even then, the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. This is from Genesis. Good morning, this is the Apa family. Adam. Trisha. Ashley. Colin. Amy. Greeting you this Pentecost Sunday from outside our home. Here is part of our litany for Pentecost. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The, the, the world and all those, those who live in it. When God sends forth the Spirit, all living things are created. And even the face of the earth is renewed. Happy Pentecost! This is Jessica and Isabel coming to you from outside our house. Our scripture this morning is from John 3, 8. The wind blows where it chooses, and people hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Good morning, everyone. I am Ann Miller, and my horse Blue and I are also greeting you this Pentecost Sunday. I hope you are all well and enjoying this rather warm weather. Here is the last part of our litany for Pentecost. It's from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Good morning. I'm Kathleen Singh, greeting you from our East Church Sanctuary and welcoming you to worship this Pentecost Sunday. Welcome to worship. Alleluia. Psalm 29 verse 11 says, May the Lord give strength to the people, and may the Lord bless the people with the Spirit's peace.
prayer this morning is a text that is translated from a 12th century hymn. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and from your celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, Father, Mother of the poor, come, source of all our store, come, within our bosoms shine. You of comforters the best, you, the soul's most welcome guest, sweet refreshment here below. In our labor, rest most sweet, grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O oh, blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of thine and our inmost being fill. Where you are not, humanity has not. Nothing good in deed or thought, nothing free from taint or ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew. On our dryness pour your dew. Wash the stain of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. On the faithful who adore and confess you evermore, with your graceful gifts descend. Give them virtue's sure reward, give them your salvation, Lord, give them joys that never end. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Good morning, children. It's your special time. So if you come from wherever you are and gather around the computer or the television, we'll have a special time in worship just for you. I'll wait. Did you have some trouble watching the worship service last week, kids? It was so frustrating because our website wasn't working right. It took a couple of days to get it all fixed, and, and it's working again. So this Sunday, there shouldn't be any problems about our worshiping, and you can take part. Oh, I'm glad for that. I really am. It's been kind of a crazy week, though, hasn't it? There have been such bad rains and flooding, and we have to stay home some more time. Oh, it's been a little bit frustrating, but very, very important to take care of one another by doing, especially the stay at home and, and by wearing masks when, when you're out in public. This is also a great week because in the church we can celebrate the, the festival of Pentecost. That is, this time, just a few weeks after Easter, when people, the disciples of Jesus, were gathered together in a room and God's Spirit came upon them and they were filled with joy and with a power and went out and talked to people in many, many ways that everybody could understand. Now, I want to know if you think you can see the wind. Oh, I, I know you can see it when the trees are swaying and you can feel it when it's blowing. You, you can see it when the rain's coming down and slants. Yeah, you can see it, but, but on a day when it's calm, how do you see the wind? If you were in church now, how would you feel the spirit being like a wind? Well, I know one way, and I am so glad I'm not too old for this. One way is to, to see the wind is to make it be seen. I bet you have bubbles too that you've used. If this still works for me, you ready to see the wind? There they come. Oh, that wasn't very good. We can do better than that. Let's see the wind. There we go. I caught the wind. We can see the wind when we find a way like with bubbles to, to capture it. It's beautiful at a wedding when people blow bubbles and people see the wind and share the joy of a couple after they've gotten married to celebrate with them. The Bible says, 
And we can learn that we can see the wind, the Spirit of God like the wind, when we do the things that Jesus taught us to do. Loving one another, helping one another, caring for one another when someone is hurt, giving them food, sending them a note and saying, hi, and I love you, doing everything that we can to share love. We can see the wind of the Spirit. We can see what Jesus taught. And that's what Pentecost is all about. Okay, you ready to pray? One, two, three. Dear God, thank you for the wind of your spirit. Thank you that we can learn to do what is right and good with the Spirit's teaching. Amen. This morning's scripture is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. The coming of the Holy Spirit. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the reading. Shall we be in prayer? Gracious God, come to us this day. May your Spirit's blessing be upon us. May each one from wherever we are and whoever we may be know your love, know your care, and the Spirit's good news. Amen. One of the powerful lessons in the Bible's account of Pentecost is this. With the giving of the Holy Spirit came the power to communicate. The Spirit's gift wasn't generic communication, but a graceful capacity to bring good news to those who needed it with the love and truth of Jesus Christ. That is a spiritual gift that is always needed, capacity to relate to one another, hearts ready to understand and accept, having empathy for one another, building the kind of community that shares compassion and joy communication as good news. Now I have to say there's a bit of humor in that to my wife Karen. You see, Karen and I, you see, Karen has had long time challenges with hearing loss. And now for several weeks I have been suffering from an ear ear infection that's also affected my ability to hear well. So we smile and have to apologize to to one another often with an old line from a great movie. It seems that we have lost the ability to communicate. However, 
the truth of that is one of the most dramatic testaments in the history of humanity's distancing from God. It seems that we have lost the power and the ability to communicate. Yet the work of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost is understood as God's great reversal of the confusion and alienation symbolized in the account of the Tower of Babel. Remember it from Genesis. The ancients tried to build a tower reaching all the way to heaven so they could become like the gods. But the one true God destroyed the tower and scattered people all over the earth, separating them from one another because of all their different agendas and languages promoting self-interest. Until at Pentecost, the capacity for words to bring good news to one another was restored. I look at the early biblical narrative and find comparisons with these days and the situations we find ourselves in. If communication can be an outpouring of good news, it is a shame that so many words are spoken today but yield a scarcity of it. When the Spirit seemed to blow where it will, with it came the COVID-19 infection. The tongues of fire that burn seem to be out of control and are warning signs of environmental devastation. With the constant barrage of bad news reporting alienation and extremism and violence, our interior lives likewise exhibit more and more signs of depression. That unfortunately affects the church too. To sing happy birthday church from a distance, it's hard to prove that to be helpful. Research from the Barna Group, well known for charting both the hopes for and trends in church life, isn't reporting good news. Their demographic studies suggest that one third of mainline Protestant churches will close in the next 18 months. But statistical analysis, thank goodness, doesn't take Pentecost into account. When the world had broken apart, God in Christ and the Holy Spirit was building up again. And if it is from God, nothing can stop the communication of good news. Even today, even though what the church looks like tomorrow will not be the same as what the church has been, the Spirit of God is not finished with us. And as the Holy Spirit has before gathered up power in its energy and gotten it more and more concentrated until its compression is released with profound new energy, so it will be again. Caution! The Holy Spirit is still at work. And the first gift of good news it brings, dear friends, is that the Spirit is the very thing we need most at this time. And that is peace for our hearts and minds and souls. Breathe in the Spirit. Say, come Lord Jesus. Pray out loud and wait. There will come to you a sense of peace, an unspoken feeling of reassurance with the presence of God and that the love we need from God will never end. A second gift of good news that comes from the Spirit and with which it communicates good news is that wind that opens the doors to the church and gives believers a big push to go out and serve others just as the disciples were pushed out and went to serve at Pentecost. Just as Jesus pushed his followers to understand that when he said what you have done for the least of these, it is as if you have done it for me. 
And finally, the good news is that, is that the Spirit does come with a set of instructions. It's not a hurricane with winds out of control. The Holy Spirit is in the what would Jesus do of the Gospels. A builder's manual, if you will. A playbook to build up what the world's misconduct broke down. Instructions for community, not alienation. And compassion, not hatred. And justice, not vigilantism. Healing, not turning away. Love, not fear. Hope, winning against despair. Communication as good news. The Holy Spirit coming as a renewed capacity to relate to each other. Hearts ready to understand and accept, having empathy for all, and building the kind of community that shares both compassion and joy. And all that Pentecost happens, and when it does, we shall say again and again, happy birthday, church. Amen. Dear friends, as we bring our hearts and minds together in prayer, may I invite you to pray along with me to share in our heartfelt feeling for those who have suffered from this COVID-19 illness, the 6,000 people in Michigan who have passed away, the 100,000 in this country, the 400,000 around the world. This is such a challenging such a time of suffering. We pray also for those who are near, for family and friend from whom we must keep our distance even if they are close by. We pray that we might meet them in our spirits, that we might share with them with our voices, that we might see each other on our phones and in our, on our computers. We pray about the challenges that are faced, the economic challenges that many are facing, the, the challenges that have divide us, divided us politically. And we pray also, pray also for those who are suffering violence at this time, those who have suffered the extremism of others. We pray for people like George Floyd in Minnesota, who seems to have died so unjustly at the hands even of those sworn to protect us all. We pray. We pray also with joy for a church that continues to serve the birthday of the church on this Pentecost day, for people of faith, 
for people of good courage who are doing not just what they can, but acting courageously for others. All of those, for all of those, may we be in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you today knowing full well the breadth of this pandemic, the challenges that are facing this world, we ourselves who are struggling and many who have suffered. We know that you do not come to us with answers that immediately and miraculously erase this situation you come as a presence to be with us. A sense of peace, a, a, an experience of love, a touch of forgiveness, the strengthening of hope. Gracious God, we do pray and we give you thanks with those prayers that your presence is here and that you have no distance from us but you are within our very spirits. May we be faithful enough to trust in you, O God, and share with you our burdens. May we give to you our concerns and pray with intercession for those who are in need. And may it be that we will be resensitized deep in, in not only understanding but care for all to love one another as you have loved us. In the spirit of Christ Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Many thanks to the Worship and Arts Board for calling all our members of the church and, and saying, would you send a card in honor of the celebration of Pentecost when we say happy birthday, church, and we've received lots and lots of cards, that, and I want to share them with you this morning. Uh, first one is to East Church, wishing you a day wrapped in happiness. Happy birthday. Love the Dodsons. And then this one from Marilyn Dunn. East Church, thanking God for you and the difference you make in my life. East Church has been an important part of my life for the past 63 years. And then this one from Ann Miller. Together or far apart, you're always in my heart. Happy 126th birthday to East Congregational Church and all that it encompasses. Love, joy, peace patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Blessings to all. And this from James, Jane Farnsworth. Happy 126th birthday to East Congregational Church. Through the many years, our church has changed with the times, and I'm proud to say that we continue to adapt our mission to the challenges we face today. Peace from Jane. Jerry Ambrose says, happy birthday to East Congregational Church on its 126th birthday. And Pat and John Sisko say, dearest East Church, a very blessed happy birthday to all of your members and friends. Thank you for all you do with love. And Stephanie Gigrich has created a card that says, time to celebrate you, East Church. Happy birthday to truly original, one of a kind, super awesome you. And she writes, thank you for being a spiritual home for thousands over the years, for providing food, shelter, fellowship, healing, and more. You don't look a day over a hundred. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bob and Shirley Fainer write, Happy birthday to the church that has meant so much to us during this time of social distancing. 
and happy birthday to the church that started with Jesus and his disciples so many centuries ago. And our moderator, Jim Nodder, and dear Penny Nodder, the chair of the worship board, says, wishing you the magic of the season of Pentecost. Happy birthday, East. Amen. Friends, before we close our service this morning, I'd like to offer words of thanks to all of you. Thanks for your many prayers for East Congregational, for your cards, many thanks for all that you are doing. Thank you also for your contributions that are keeping the church afloat in these difficult times. Many thanks, too, to Jameson Thompson for all his hard work and his beautiful artistry and in bringing these services to us and producing great technical services. Now, if only he could make me 25 pounds lighter, that would be perfection, but we have to live with who we are. I also want to let you know that on Wednesday night that the, the church council met and discussed about opening the church to outside groups and when to open the church to our own congregation for, for worship and for activities. The decision was made to, to keep the church closed for the foreseeable future until we have better recommendations from the CDC and the state of Michigan and our own United Church of Christ. In the interim, we will be forming a small group, a small committee to discuss what it will look like for us to open and how we can do that incrementally, gradually, and help for us all. As we close this service, I would say to you what I have said for years and years and years, and will say again tomorrow and believe forever, that it is our faith that will make us well. And with our faithfulness, we can set this world right. So go with God and go in peace. Go in peace and we shall go with God. Amen. Amen.